Hello and welcome to today's video lesson. Today we're going to talk about function shifting a little bit more. Uh, this is the fourth in a five-part series. We have looked at moving functions vertically, moving functions horizontally, side to side, and stretching vertically, shrinking vertically. Now we're going to look at horizontal stretches and shrinks. In our video where we looked at vertical shifting, we put a multiplier somewhere. And the multiple, let's say we use the two. We put it in front of the old, the original function. So every y coordinate, for some value of x, every y coordinate on the new function is equal to 2 times the y coordinate of the old function at that same value of x. This had the effect of doubling all your y values. The ones that were negative became more negative. The ones that were positive became more positive. If this number became a number less than 1, say 0.5, what you were really doing is cutting all the y values in half. If the number in front of the f of x was negative, say negative 1, you were flipping over the x-axis because you were changing the sign. For each x, you were changing the sign of each y value. You could have multiplied by a negative 2. You were changing the sign and the value. But the bottom line is you were changing the y-coordinates, but the x-coordinates were staying the same. Today, we're going to look at what happens if instead of putting that 2 on the outside, what happens if I say I put the 2 on the inside? So if I calculated y in my original function, I would use 2 times x. So if, h, if x is 1 for my new function, I would have to use the y value at x is 2, because 2 times 1 is 2 of my old function. And this would have the effect of moving my points in. If h of negative 1 will be f of negative 2, so this will have the, have the effect of compressing horizontally my function, and that's what we're going to see. Sorry for my junk mail pop up there. We'll get rid of that. Um, so let's move on. This is a, We're going to work with this function that we've been working with, x minus 1 squared times x plus 3. Here are some important points on that function, and we're going to see how these points change. And what you're going to see is we're changing the x coordinates here. When I when I put in when I put a multiplier in front of the x in the parentheses with the x, I'm changing horizontal things. Horizontal horizontal quantities are the x coordinates. So let's define a new function that's related to f of x. It's f of negative x. So for my new function, if I want to know what should I plot at x is one. I have to look at my old function and see what the y-coordinate was when x was negative 1. So when x was negative 1 on my old function, it looks like my old function is in the dotted blue. It looks like I had about an 8. So when x is 1 on my new function, oh, it looks like I'm going to have about an 8. What happens is you're going to take the points on your original function, and um, some of the important points were the, the uh, x-intercepts are negative 1, 0. And we had another point, 3, 0. And then we had, um, I'm sorry, we had negative 3, 0 and 1, 0 on our original function. This is the original function. So the original function is here. There's our negative 3, 0. There's our 1, 0. And on our, in on our original function, we also had a, a y-intercept of 0, 3. And the way these are going to change is I'm going to look at the x-coordinate. And for my new function, g of x is f of negative x, each x-coordinate is going to change. So negative, of times neg negative 1 times negative 3, I now have a 3, 0 from this point. So this becomes 3, 0. This point becomes negative 1, 0. And this point becomes, oh, negative 1 times 0 is still 0. That stays 0, 3. So I have not changed my y-intercept. Another point that was interesting on our original function was this negative 1.79.5 of the relative max. Well, now that becomes a positive 1.79.5. And you can see these points are on the graph of our new function, g of x. I graphed this using some software, and it, it graphed it correctly. So we can look and see negative 1, 0. Yep, it's right there. 3, 0. Yep, it's right there. So the way you would find some points to graph on your new function is write down some points that are on the original function. And for each 
x coordinate, you actually, in this case, you just change the sign. You're dividing by a negative one technically, but you're changing the sign because all I've done is change the sign of x here. So that is not too difficult one. That's actually called a reflection about the x-axis. It's not so much a shift as a, I'm sorry, it's a reflection about the y-axis. When you change the signs of the x's, you reflect about the y-axis. It's not so much a shift, but a reflection. Let's look at something that makes it a little different though. What if instead of a negative, I just do f of 2x? So I, again, I have these points on the original graph. I had a negative 3, 0. And I had a 0, 3. And I had a 1, 0. And I also had a negative 1.79.5, that relative, relative maximum. So this is on f of x. So when x is negative 3, y was 0. Well. Now, if I want to have the same y value as I had at when x was negative 3 there, x would have to be negative 1.5, so 2x would be negative 3. So if f of negative 3 is always 0, when x is negative 1.5, 2x is negative 3, so here when x is negative 1.5, I'm going to get the same value for the function that I got when x was negative 3. I take each x coordinate, I divide each x of f of x by 2. Remember I, remember I said that when you do something to the horizontal coordinate, it does exactly the opposite of what you thought it would. You, would. you would look at this and think you'd multiply times 2. Because when we looked at our vertical shifting, you did multiply the y's by 2. But when you put this 2 inside with the x, you're not changing the y's anymore. You're changing the x's, and that changes the opposite of what you would think. Just like when you had f of x plus 2 in horizontal shifting, it shifted to the left, and you would have thought it went right. Here, instead of doubling each x, you're dividing each x by 2. So whatever number goes in front of the x, you divide each of your original x coordinates by that. So I'm going to get these points here, where I had negative 3, 0, half of negative 3 is negative 1.5, I'm going to have negative 1.5, 0. Half of 0 is still 0, so I'm only changing the x's. So these are my points on my new function. Half of 1 is 0. 0.5, and half of negative 1.7 is about negative, um, oh, I should know this, <laughs> so half of negative, negative 0. 0.5, negative 0. 0.85. 9.5. So let's see if those points indeed show up on our new black graph h of x. So negative 0.85, yeah, that, that looks like it's a little less than negative 1, and it's still 0.95. So this y moves in here. When I had 1, 0, it's now 1 half 0. This y, this, sorry, this x moves in here. I'm squishing the graph. I'm compressing the graph. When you multiply by a number bigger than 1, you compress the graph. When you multiply by a negative number, when you multiply by a negative 1, you reflect the graph over the y-axis. If you multiplied by a negative 2, you would reflect and compress. You could get this compression in black first and then change all the signs of the x-coordinates and you would see it was compressed and reflected. But the trick here is that this 2x did not stretch it out. You would think it does. It actually shrinks it. So here is my new graph in black compared to my original if I, if I change my f of x to an f of 2x. Now, what if this number is less than 1? When you divide by 0.5, let's just take a number, take the number 4 and divide it by 0 0.5. Now I've already told you that because it's with the x, you do the opposite of what you would think to the coordinate. You're dealing with the x coordinate, you know the x that's with, the number is grouped with the x. And you're not going to multiply it by 0.5, though, you're going to divide it. When you divide 4 by 0.5, you actually get a bigger number. You get 8. It's 4 divided by a half, a 0.5 is a half. And when you divide by a fraction, you take the top and you multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom, and that will give you your 8. So in this case, because this number, is smaller than 1, it's positive and smaller than 1, I'm actually going to expand my graph left and right. And if you look at this, there's the original, 
and originally I had a point at negative 3, 0. It is now at negative 6, 0. Negative 3 divided by a half is negative 6. My point at 1, 0 is now at 2, 0. 1 divided by a half is 2. So this will expand by dividing each x-coordinate of my original function by 0.5 and making that the new x-coordinate of my new graph. So we're going to try a couple. Again, we have our, our function that's defined in, in pieces, as we typically have. And um, we're going to take a look at that. If I can get the software working here, I'm touching the wrong thing. There we go. So there's my new function. There's, I'm going to deal with this function, and I'm going to shift this function now. This is my f of x defined as a graph. Here is f of 2x. How can we graph this? Well, we talked about you divide each x-coordinate by 2. So what, what are the original points on this graph? That would be helpful to know. So we, we only really need to look at a few points. We'll look at these. So I have what looks like a... So this is a negative 9... Oh, sorry, that's a negative 8. These are each worth 1, but the 10 is actually over here. That's an x is negative 8, and y is 3. And I have an x is negative 5, and a y is 0. And I have an x is negative 2, and a y is negative 3. And an x is 0, and a y is negative 1. And an x is 1, and a y is 0. And an x is... 3 and a y, sorry, I did not, not mark that correctly, make that point correctly. Okay. X is 3 and y is 2, and x is 5 and y is 2. So those are my original function. That's my f of x. My new function, which I call g of x, is going to have each of these points, but the x coordinates are going to be divided by 2. So for g of x, instead of negative 8, 3, I have negative 4, 3. Instead of negative 5, 0, I have negative 2.5, 0. Instead of negative 2, negative 3, I have negative 1, negative 3. 0, negative 1. 0 0.5, 0, instead of 1, 0. 1 1.52, instead of 3, 2. And 2.52, instead of... 5, 2. And now, I, I can simply plot these points. So, here is negative 4, 3. Here is negative 2.5, 0. Negative 1, 3. 0, negative 1. 1 half, 0. 0.5 is 1 half, so it's in between 0 and 1. 1 and a half, 2, and 2.5, 2. Now I need to connect these. This arrow is not part of the graph. I was just showing you that that moved over in that way. And this would be a line because the other was a line, though it's a steeper line, interestingly enough. And then my domain would have changed, too. I, my, now my function starts at negative 4, as x is negative 4, and ends at x is 2 and a half. So that is how I would graph f of 2x. Now, I would divide each x-coordinate of my function f of x by 2, and I would have some points to plot. What if I want to graph f of negative x? My new function h of x is f of negative x. So every x-coordinate is divided by a negative 1, essentially. Dividing by a negative 1 and multiplying by a negative 1 have the same effect, but really we're dividing because negative x is the same as negative 1 times x. And when we have our transformation grouped in the parentheses with the independent variable, the x, it means we kind of do the opposite of what it looks like. It looks like we would multiply the x, so we divide the x by negative 1 turns out to be the same as multiplying. All it's going to do is change the sign of the x-coordinates. If I take a negative 8 and I divide it by negative 1, I get a positive 8. So over here at positive 8, I have what was this point. And then at x is negative 5, whatever that y-coordinate is gets plotted at x is positive 5. 
at x is negative 2, that point gets plotted at positive 2. At x is 0, negative 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. You can't do negative 1 divided by 0, but that's not what we're doing. We're taking 0 and we're dividing it by negative 1. When the 0 is in the numerator, or the 0 is what, you're, what you start with, and then you divide, you get an answer of 0. So this point here actually stays the same on both functions. x is 0 does, is still x is 0. 0, negative 1 is still 0, negative 1. But when I look at this point, this point would be 1, 0. It becomes negative 1, 0. This point up here would be 3, 2. It becomes negative 3, 2. And this point over here was at 5, 2. So it is graphed at negative 5, 2. And then I connect these. So if you put a negative in front of the x, it really it reflects your graph over the y-axis. So you can think of it as it rotates it around the y-axis. In some sense, what was over here spun around and came over there. It's really, it just flips it over. It gives you a reflection of what you had over the y-axis. And I don't know if you remember from the other videos, but if we did negative f of x, what we would have had was a reflection over the x-axis because all the y-coordinates would have changed sign. So those are reflections. So if there's a negative... So right now what we're looking at is not this, so I'm going to erase that to avoid any confusion. What we're looking at right now is f of negative x. So this just means all the x coordinates are going to be divided by negative 1, which would just change the sign. So because we're changing the sign in front of the x, we're, re we're reflecting over the y-axis. When we change the sign in front of the whole function, we're changing the signs of the y, so we, we what, what was up here comes down there. What we're doing here is what was over here on the right is now over there on the left, just as far away from the y-axis, but on the other side. Okay, so that's a very important shift to understand. So here is the summary of what you need to know. What you need to know is when you have a number, and if it's just a negative sign, it means that number is a negative 1. In front of the x, you divide, you take the, x, you take the points of your original function and divide each x-coordinate by that number keeping the y-coordinates the same. The effect will be, if that number k was a fraction less than 1, it will stretch the graph, because when, you, because when you divide by a number less than 1, your quotient is bigger than the number you started with. If, it's a, if the absolute value is less than 1 and it happens to be negative, you will stretch, it, stretch the graph horizontally, but you will also reflect it over the y-axis. It will rotate around the y-axis. So that'll, that'll be almost a multiple step thing, but you don't have to do it in two steps. If you had f of negative 0.5x, you would simply take the coordinates of the points for f of x and divide each by negative 0.5. The fact that the 0.5 is, is not bigger than 1 means you're going to stretch it. The negative means you're also going to reflect it. So if the k is bigger than 1, the graph will compress horizontally or shrink horizontally. It kind of kind of gets pushed in because whatever you graphed at x was 2 is now graphed at x is 1, for instance. And if it's, and if the graph, if k is an absolute value bigger than 1, if the number is less than negative 1, then its absolute value is bigger than 1. So if you have something bigger than 1 but it's also negative, then you're going to shrink horizontally and reflect over the y-axis. Again, you're just dividing the x-coordinates by k. That might be the simplest way to look at it is on a point-by-point -point basis. There are two problems for you to try in the next page. So let's go see what those are. All right, so you need to shut the video off in a moment and try these problems. All right, shut, shut it off. Come back when you're ready. Okay, you're back. So I'm assuming you, you tried this. Now, we had... I'm going to look at this as our list of points. This point here was negative 8. So I have f of negative 2x. So I had the point negative 8, 3. That's an f of x. And g of x, that point negative 8 gets divided by the negative 2 
there. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 and negative divided by negative is a positive. I get a positive 4, 3. So that gives me this point right here. And that was from that, so that becomes a closed circle. And if I look at some of my other points, negative 5, 0 will become positive 2 and a half, 0. Because I divide negative 5 by negative 2, I get positive 2 and a half. This point here, negative 2, negative 3. Divide negative 2 by negative 2, I get positive 1. So I get a positive 1, negative 3 here. I'm just changing the x-coordinates. This point here was 0, negative 1. 0 divided by negative 2 is still 0. Then I look at this point on the original function here. 1, 0, 1 divided by negative 2 will be negative 1 half. So I have negative 1 half, 0. I put that about there. This point would have been 3, 2. 3 divided by negative 2 is negative 3 halves. So there's 1 is 2 halves. So negative 3 halves would be right there. And then 5 divided by negative 2. This point is 5, 2. 5 divided by negative 2 is negative 2 and a half. So there's my 2, 2 and a half. And I get negative 2 and a half, 3. So I've compressed my graph. You can see it's it, it, the domain is smaller. The, the length of the x's that the graph covers is smaller. And I've also rotated it. This flat piece over here is now over here. So that was from dividing each of the x-coordinates of these points by a negative 2. Let's move on to the next example. If you haven't tried it, stop the video and then come back. All right, your next practice problem is f of 0.5x. So I, I changed the graph on this little to make it easier. I expanded. Notice it used to go to 10. Now each of these is worth 2. That's negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. I didn't do that to confuse you. I did that so you can fit the answer in. But in our original graph, the points are still the same as they were. I have this negative 8, 3. This is in the original. And then I had negative 5, 0. It's a little harder to read because that's 2, 4, and that's halfway, so that's 5. And then there was a 0, negative 1. There was a 1, 0. This is on the original graph. I'm reading these points now. A 3, 2 and a 5, 2. And I'm just reading these off of my graph. Now, I want f of 0.5x as my new function. That means I'm going to take each x-coordinate and divide by 0 0.5. So the first x-coordinate was negative 8. Negative 8 divided by 0 0.5 equals negative 16. When you divide by a number smaller than 1, you get a number bigger Sign stays the same in this case. The negative divided by positive is a negative. So I get a negative 16, 3 for a point. And that would be 10, 12, 14, 16. And notice this is going to stay on this. This I was working with this point. It's on the left of the y-axis. I'm still on the left because there was no negative in front of my k was a positive number. So I'm not reflecting over any axes. So the next point here, negative 5 divided by 0.5. Dividing by 0.5 is the same as dividing by a half, which really is multiplying by 2. That's negative 10. So I get the point negative 10, 0. And negative 10, 0 would be right there. That came from this point. So this one is going to be that big closed circle at the end. And I'm just making points that are visible here. So I'm basically I'm doubling. When you divide by negative... When you divide by positive 0.5, you're doubling every number. So double of 0. Again, the 0, when you divide by 0.5, doesn't change. So I had 0, negative 1 on my graph. I guess I skipped one of these points. This point, 0, negative 1, will remain at 0, negative 1. This point here, this point was at negative 1, negative 3. That was on the original graph. I, for some reason, seemed to skip that one. I'm sorry, was it negative 2, negative 3? Because these are now worth 2 each. And this was 0, 2. Let's see, in the uh, okay, in the, in the y direction, we're still worth 1 each. So that's 0, negative 1. Um, negative 2, negative 3 was on the original graph, right there. 
So now negative 2 divided by 0.5 is negative 4. So that becomes negative 4, negative 3. And that gets graphed right there because this, this, is, this is 2, 3, 4. So negative 4, negative 3. That one stays the same for the x-coordinate because 0 divided by 0.5 is still 0. When I get to my points up here, I had a point at 1, 0. 1 divided by 0.5 is 2. That becomes at 2, 0. I had a point at 3, 2. That becomes 6, 2. Remember, that's 6 because these are each worth 2. And the point at 5, 2 is now at 10, 2. I did not affect the y-coordinates at all. And notice I just did it point by point, step at a time. When you get these more complicated ones, you might think you can see what's going to happen, but it's nice to try a couple points to make sure. Now, look at the, the original points and the corresponding new points are still on the same side of the y-axis as they were, are still on the same side as the x-axis as they were. I've just expanded this graph horizontally. It's, it's been stretched out horizontally. All right, so hopefully you got those. If you're having trouble, you can send me an email or see me in office hours. And that's it for tonight's lesson. Thank you.